Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the 2024 Derby City Classic. We got round one action here going with Chip Compton versus Chris Reinhold. My name is Summerfield Habner, and this is Railbirds Productions. Brought to you in part by Bad Boys. And we are here, Southern Indiana, fabulous Southern Indiana. And this should be a fun match. A couple of real quality players here. Looks like Chris won the break. Racking him up right now. For those of you who don't know, this is one pocket. That means Chris is going to break towards one of the foot pockets, feet pockets down there on his end of the table on that far right. And he's going to have to make eight balls in his pocket before his opponent, Chip Compton, makes eight balls in his. Uh, very defensive-minded game, uh, but... These are both a couple, couple shooters, real aggressive players, so let's see what we're in for. Chris not necessarily known for his one-pocket ability, um, but a very, very strong shooter. Uh, Chip, far more known for his one-pocket game. And I always find these matches really interesting. Uh, you got a, a pure shooter versus somebody who's really skilled at the game of one-pocket, so it should be fun to watch. Pretty decent break there. Um, Chris floated a little far away from that right side rail, and that really, really opens up a lot of opportunity for Chip to respond to his break. Got a pretty decent spread, but it looks like Chip might have a path between that 4-9, and if he does to see that 6-ball, he has a pretty good chance of turning this break around pretty quick. So getting that 6-ball on his side of the table, protecting it using the 2, and... Boy, just like that, I mean, that that really turns things around, you know. Just that one threat for Chip really, really changes what Chris can do offensively here. Looks like he's probably going to float him into the stack here. Might, I don't think he's got the line for this two-railer. Wow, almost clipped that one, and that could have worked out really, really well. Floats all the way to the high side of that table. Uh, puts the pressure back on Chip. Not probably not going to take that back cut. I mean, that's just risking way too much. Looking at playing, playing the one and probably floating straight down there behind the eight. Man, if he can get underneath that nine ball. Wow, a couple of really nice shots. Uh, Chris does have a return bank here on the eight ball. You got to watch out for the side pocket here, and he's got to make sure he doesn't leak too far back to the left side of the table to make that six a viable cut. It's a really nice shot. And yeah, he, I mean, didn't get enough of an angle on that ball, but really wanted to make sure he stayed to the right side of that table. Did a great job doing it. Looks like he's going to play off the top side of the eight and hopefully right under that nine this time. Oh, and clip the two ball. That's going to be trouble. Unfortunately for Chris, he's going right into that nine. Probably going to force, force this shot to try and get out. Oh, that's about as bad a roll as you can get in one pocket. Carom, 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 scratch. Um, yeah, that's really unfortunate. Chris is going to spot that ball. He's going to 0-1 and chip. And after a very, very fortunate roll there, he's off to the races. Starting with the three nudges. Yeah, you can get in trouble there. You try to nudge that ball, break things loose, and all of a sudden... All you got is a shot on this two ball. Fortunately for him, <clears throat> he can he can just kind of stiff this bank. Wow, catch the high side of that pocket, hits it beautifully. Enough an angle on the six to probably get... Hmm, I'm not sure if he'll try and force over for that five. Exactly. Very nice shot. Got himself pretty straight here. Um, I'm not sure about that 9.15 off the 14. It looks like he might be able to do something there. Tries to force his way around, but it's still pretty slippery here on these conditions and just got enough of a hop that that didn't really work out. <coughs> I kind of like kicking behind the 9 ball here. Looks like he's just going to play off the 13 and in that little cradle. Really wanted to get all the way under that 9, and it looks like he did. He protected the 12 bank. 
So pretty nice shot there, and Chip is up to a four, negative one lead. Chris, not much of a choice but to play off this nine ball here. Oh wow, he could see it, tries to sneak under it. Wow, and he was really trying to twist that ball, and that's a pretty aggressive shot from the position he's in. I don't, I really don't think Chip's going to take this three ball combo. <laughs> no man. Maybe he's got enough to shoot that 13. Oh, looks like he does. Or he thought he did. Not quite getting there. Uh, gets to a pretty safe position though. Chris has been playing pretty aggressive. I don't think he's going to try and get out of the way of this bank here. If he does, he's really got to fire it. Playing the two railer on the one it looks like. Yeah, good things can happen from there. You got a bunch of balls by your pocket. You don't really want to create more of a cluster there. Uh, and it lined up pretty good for him. No clear shot here for Chip at his pocket. Um, still taking a look at that combo. And I've been interested in that 9.15 off the 14 since we got started. It looks like he's going to give it a try. Boy, is that an aggressive shot. Um, yeah, and despite the fact that he, I mean, Chris needs nine and Chip only needs four, this is a guy that can run balls. So let's see if Chris can get out of this. He's got a few real obvious ones. I think he's probably going to go 14 9. Yeah, trying to loosen those balls up right there. Really don't want to get stuck in that pack and. Does a great job. I mean, that just opened the stack up perfectly. Little queuing over this 12, a little straight on the 9, so this isn't the shot you really want to force, but that's what he's got. Does a good job, doesn't quite get around. He's going to have to bank that 13 next. Pretty straight bank, though. Oh boy, that's that's the trouble with playing banks before you play one pocket at this event is the banks start looking like they're all going to go for you because that's all you've been doing is banking the ball and you just start banking the ball like you're not playing one pocket. That's one where you, A, you really want to make sure you make that ball, but B, you want to make sure you leave it towards your hole. Fortunately, it doesn't float all the way in front of Chip's hole for him. Uh, Chip with a pretty distinct advantage here, everything in front of his pocket. Um, just trying this long straight back on the one. And that's that's the speed you want to be banking in one pocket, kind of no matter what you're doing. Leaving it right in front of that, making sure that threat stays there. Chris has definitely shown that he's going to try and get out of this rack, so got to think he's going to shoot that four ball. Nope. Playing the three railer on the one, probably. going to come thin, but he might get a little kiss here. Ooh. So yeah, I mean, he didn't he didn't want to get wide enough to make that one ball because he's going to end up selling the 13 or the 15. Does a good job controlling the cue ball. Um, boy, it's, yeah, it's hard to call what these guys are going to do from here. I, Chip is going to try this back bank on the one. And probably try to get all the way around the table to not sell the four here. Nope, wasn't worried about it. Guess that's what happens when you're that confident in making those banks. Four ball does look like it's got a clear path. He's only got three to go. Yeah, it looks like he's going to... If you just roll this ball, you can kind of float down for a perfect position on the 15. And yeah, that's... That's a one-pocket player right there. You're... I mean, you dog the ball, but you put yourself in a great position. Um, that's exactly what you want. I mean, you, you hope that ball goes in, but... Even if it doesn't, you, you know you're covered. So playing the two-way beautifully. And Chris is in trouble. There's a very small part of the table he can get to. 
to not sell that four ball. Um, yeah, I mean, even doubling him up on the far side of the table, he's going to, that's going to be tough. Looks like he might just kick long rail and try and get under the four. He's got a little more room for the one railer than I thought, but he's probably going to play head rail, right side rail. Just try and lean in there. What a magnificent kick there by Chris. Oh, it doesn't get a rail. All right. I thought, yeah, I thought he had one to spot. There we go. So, I mean, Chris almost hit that ball perfectly. Hitting with that kind of speed did not scratch there, make contact. I mean, it's incredible he didn't get a hit. And, yeah, I mean, turns it around. Losing a ball there is way better than selling that game. So, great shot there for Chris. Chip just kicking that ball to his side of the table. Kicks it right in the pocket. I don't think he really wanted to make that ball, but I don't think he minds making it either. I mean, it clears up his, his bank lanes if he needs to shoot. I think Chris is probably going to kick me, just kick down and try and move that four ball again. Oh, it looks like he's going more aggressive. He's moving some balls out of there. Does so really well, too. That's an excellent shot. Uh, kind of clogging up the table a little more for Chip. Chip does have a straight straight back here, <clears throat> which I think he'll probably take. I guess the 10 passes also. Yeah. Not quite getting there, but hanging it in the pocket. I think you're going to see another removal by Chris here. Probably going to see side rail first here. Maybe right about the same time. That cue ball's going to be moving out of there, though. Oh, wow. Plays the aggressive carom. And you got to love that shot. I mean, moving that ball is going to be tough. You don't really know where it's going to end up. You take a swing at your hole, and maybe you got a chance of getting out. I like that shot. Chip makes that ball. Um... Yeah, again, you, you definitely see a really distinct stylistic difference here between a one-pocket player and a rotation shooter. Chips, I mean, missed a couple cuts. I mean, almost missed that ball, but is playing the two-way beautifully. All right, Chris just wiping that game. That is typically something that in Derby City you're not allowed to do. Um, the rules state that you need to complete each game. There will be no forfeiting of games. It's really not that big of a deal, and it kind of comes down to the players, but the idea being that... Oh, let's talk about our sponsors. Hustlin', JB Custom Cases, some of the best out there. Jerry Olivier Custom Cues. Mr. Lippman Lights. Locked and Loaded Custom Billiard Apparel. And there's that break by Chip. Far more conventional one pocket break there. Ball low, ball high, ball on his side. Pretty solid pack. Leaving Chris a bank though on the six, a perfect little passer, and Chris drills it. Perfect speed. Very nice shot. Another bank here on the one. Stays on that side of the table. Doesn't want to sell this three if he misses. Does a good job. Gets it on his side of the table. Looks like the nine ball is not frozen. I think that's what he was checking over there. Chip trying to move that ball off the rail just a little bit to create a little more of a wall. Does a really good job. Protecting his four ball. Gives him a little less of the stack to look at as well. That's a beautiful kick. Chris looking like he's going to play off the bottom of the 15 and fly it, float over by the 4. And boy, that pocket's just huge for him right there. Man, early scratches like that are going to dictate a lot about how the match is going to go. All right, Chip with ball in hand in the kitchen there. 
And... Yep. He's got... He's got a few to work with here. He's going to have to figure out either how to pop open that pack. Yeah. I think he'll probably... I don't think he'll go here. I think he'll probably wait for the four. I kind of like shooting now so that you still have the four to work with if you don't end up with a shot. I think a lot of one pocket players are just going to take the balls that are out there and then kind of reassess afterwards. I don't think he left himself enough of an angle to really bust into things. But Chip definitely fires some balls. Alright, so just going to take the bank instead here. It's like playing the 15. Mm. Actually, I might play with the 12 here. Still got the 15 to work with afterwards. He likes the pass around the 15. That gets him all the way down table, so he's got the 9 next. Definitely a smart shot. He's got enough of an angle to get up here. For the 12, there's no clear pocket, but... This is when you might see him go into the stack. <clears throat> Looks like he can play the 6 to move the 1 towards his side. He likes the bank here. I kind of like freezing in the pack, but that's why Chip is a way better one pocket player than I am. Hits that ball beautifully. Terrific speed. If it doesn't go, it's going to hurt. I mean, it doesn't get much better than that. Chip Compton. Needs two. Just firing this bank. In the hole. No, hits it a little wide. But yeah, there's, I mean, not a lot of offensive threat here for Chris. I don't think he can see enough of that six to cut it. Yeah, he's going to... Just play that eight ball out of there. All right, trying to fire the bank. <clears throat> Nothing doing. And that was a quick game too. All right, good try there. And the sponsor of this event, the Derby City Classic, brought to you by Diamond Billiard Products, Simonis Cloth, Aramith Billiard Balls, Altsville AccuRack, that's the only rack used here at Derby City for the nine ball event, AccuStats Video Productions, and Master Billiard Chuck. This is just one of my favorite tournaments in the world. It's the largest one pocket tournament in the world, largest bank pool tournament in the world. And we come back to this match, Chris Reinhold down 2 nothing. If you like what you're hearing, like what you're seeing, hit that like and subscribe button. Again, we are Railbirds Productions, and we got tons of Derby City action coming to you. Yep, so Chip got a clear line on this bank. Drills it. I I always struggle with that bank. I, I feel like shooting it and making it, you're shooting for one. Whereas if I had an opportunity to get an advantage, and I like the, I mean, playing that beautiful, beautiful kick shot. Oh, man, almost does what Chris did early on. Gets lucky and gets away with it. But, I mean, when you kick with that kind of confidence, you, you don't have to think quite as much what I was thinking about the advantage that you could gain by not making that ball and just getting yourself in position. Chris firing at the two-railer, hits it pretty good, a little thin. I think he's going to sell a bank here. That's a trouble with that shot. Um, I think he's... Nope, he's going to stiff it. Again, shooting for one with that bank. Like it's nothing. Two railer on the 11. And he might have a wired ball with that 13-4. Or whatever comes before the four ball there. Oh, just playing it straight. Man. That's a pretty crafty little shot. He liked the position he was getting to down there better. Shooting the the cross cross bank. I we haven't seen him not take an aggressive shot yet, so maybe he's gonna play the double kiss here. 
I'm just kicking out of there. Moving it to his side of the table. Hits that ball really well. Wow. That's a that's a tough place to play that two railer from and almost does a really incredible job of it. Gets it out of there, gets it on his side of the table. Looks like Chris is just gonna get into the pack, move something towards his hole. Doesn't want to make that nine in that situation and almost does. Real nice shot. Doesn't look like Chip can get to it. Probably going to play off the five and just make that nine for him. Just kind of looking at Massé in there. All right. Well, opportunity here for Chris. It's a tougher shot to make than it looks like. Um, but boy, you got one. Again, this is something where... I might just try to keep the nine ball in that position and freeze him behind the pack. Get out of that pocket. Don't you dare. Unbelievable. Wow. Three huge scratches there for Chris. That's just brutal. All right. So spotting it up. Uh, looks like we have a... I'm not sure what's going on here. I, it looks like Chris may have just forfeited there. Uh, I think Chris's mind might be in other places right now. I'm not sure if he's still in banks or what's going on, but... Oh, maybe not. Well, we still got somebody running balls, so let's see if Chip can get out of this. Whether or not he needs to. Alright, breaks one out. Yeah, oh, we got a forfeit for sure. Well, an excellent match there. Thanks for joining us here at the 2024 Derby City Classic. This has been Summerfield Habner with Railbirds Productions. Um, we have a ton of Derby City action coming up, so make sure you tune in. Uh, we love it. Thanks so much. We'll see you soon.